Greetings and salutations, I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching the 40th episode of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in for today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were taking a look at Lightroom, specifically how to write metadata directly to your images. Before I get to today's show, I have a quick announcement. Next Thursday, September 22nd, I'll be giving a live webinar on social media marketing. So I've partnered up with the legendary wedding photographer, David Zeiser. You can register for this webinar on his website. Go to digitalprotalk.com. So again, this is a free live webinar. Will be next week. Hope you can join us. I'll be taking some questions and delivering a presentation on social media just for you. All right, today's episode, we're talking Photoshop. This is part one of a three-part series that I'll be doing related to luminosity selections and masking. So let's go ahead and jump on in. You can see on the screen in front of you, I've got an image that I shot of the Grand Canyon. I pulled this out of Lightroom. And what I want you to see here is if I go to the Channels panel, I can hold the Command key on a Mac or the Control key on a PC. And if I Command or Control click the RGB channel, this will load the brightest values of the image as a selection. So this is known as a luminosity selection, could be used to create a luminosity mask. What I want to do is adjust just the brightest values in the image, and I've done that by loading it as a selection. Now the keyboard shortcut for this is going to be Command Option and the number 2 if you're on a Mac, or Control Alt and the number 2 if you're on a PC. That is the keyboard shortcut for CS4 and higher. If you have an older version of Photoshop, you still might be able to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control Alt and the tilde key on a PC or Command Option tilde on a Mac. So with this selection loaded, this is part one in the series, I'm going to duplicate that selection to a new layer. So I can do that quickly by pressing Command or Control J. And if I hide the background layer, I simply have the lightest areas of the image, the part that are 50% closer to white. So what would I do with this? I can change the blend mode. So if I drop the blend mode to multiply, notice how it starts to pull down and blend the highlights down into the original image. So this is before and this is after. So I'm able to actually darken the brightest parts of the image. Now I can also work with the shadow areas. Using that same selection technique, I'm going to command or control click on the RGB channel. Once again, this loads the highlight values in the image. And what I'll do is invert that selection. So if I just go to select and then inverse, I now actually have the shadow area selected in the image. So once again, I'll select the background layer. I'm going to Command or Control J, and if we take a look, these are just the shadows selected in the, in the image, the darkest areas of the image. So once again, I'll change the blend mode to multiply, and you can see this really darkens up the canyon area. So if I want to adjust that, I'll simply drop the opacity, and once again, this is the image before and this is the image after. So if you want to add some contrast and some pop or punch to your image, this is part one of the series of creating luminosity selections and we'll be talking about luminosity masks in future episodes. So if I helped you out today, please give the episode a thumbs up. As always, I appreciate it when you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I create the videos in response to your questions. Leave them for me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, this YouTube channel, or my blog, ajwood.com. So you guys have an excellent afternoon, and I'll see you next time.